what's going on guys and welcome back to another video so uh, in this video I'm going to cover the volumetrics uh, inside Cinema 4D and uh, you know try not to use them <laughs> and the reason I'm laughing is because they're kind of bad and really slow and you don't really have that many options if you can get your hands on you know Octane, Arnold or any other render engine and so use uh, try to use volumetrics in there but if you know last case scenario you want to get some volumes going and you want to get a decent result uh, using the basic volumetrics that they offer here. That's what I'm going to show you in this video and hopefully maybe you can use them in your own projects. So uh, let's, just, uh, let's just get started. So what I'm going to do and uh, the first step uh, we're using volumetrics try to block your lights with something. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, create a quick kind of like a pole maybe something like this. Maybe make it a little bit more skinny. And I'm gonna drop it, uh, drop this inside the cloner. And let's just disable uh, the position here. Zero. And let's do maybe 30 centimeters on the X and increase the count. And what we're gonna do is put this in front of the uh, sphere here that I have set up. And now uh, to activate your volumetric lights is really easy. So Cinema 4D only uh, supports two lights for volumetrics. You, you have your Omni light or the spotlight. Uh, spotlight and Omni light kind of like have the same options. So let's just do uh, Omni light for example. And uh, let's put this light behind here. And uh, the way you activate your volumetrics, if you go inside the light options uh, general tab, you have your visible light, and uh, you can do volumetric as you can see. And uh, let's just drag this up quite a bit, maybe something like this. And also, like always, if you go inside your details tab, let's turn on inverse square fall off, maybe something like this. And also, let's change the color to make this a little bit more interesting. Let's do like a yellow-orange. And for visibility, uh, you have a few options here. You have your fall-off um, percentage here. It's pretty much how bright or how uh, soft it is. You have your inner distance. Uh, pretty much makes the inner, um, you know, the inner lights stronger, uh, basically. Uh, but I'm not going to play around with this today. And also your sample distance, this is your uh, overall quality. Uh, so I'm going to keep this at default, uh, give it a quick render, and then we can add more stuff and uh, play around with this more. Uh, so let's just zoom in, uh, position the camera, maybe like this. And let's give this a uh, quick render. And as you can see right now, uh, the overall effect is kind of too strong. And also we have to activate our, uh, the shadows. So let's do that. Let me take this sphere. And bring it up a little bit and we have these set up so that's good let's uh, go to general tab and activate the area shadows to make this a little bit more interesting and um, this is how you get your basic uh, fog effect pretty much uh, so let's actually bring this way down so it's not as it's not as crazy and uh, let's give it another render and see if we can get a more interesting result. So as you can see guys, uh, this is where we're getting so far. It's a, it's a pretty decent result. So we're getting like a foggy scene and uh, it's somewhat okay I would say. Uh, but like I said, we don't have really, we don't really have that many options. Uh, but what you can do to spice this up is obviously increase the overall intensity of the light. So let's do maybe 125. Let's go inside the visibility tab Increase the quality, like I said, the sample distance um, uh, controls the quality of your volumetric. So let's drop this to 10, 10 centimeters. And then you have your brightness and dust. So let's add a little bit of dust in there. And uh, also what you can do is um, inside your noise tab, this is where you can make things a little bit more interesting. So let me just give it a quick render and see what that looks like first. So as you can see, it took a little bit longer, uh, but we, we're getting a nice uh, shadows now, and uh, the overall effect is much nicer than before. Uh, so what we can do now 
uh, is go inside the noise effect and turn on both. So you can do illumination or visibility. I usually do both. And uh, this is, uh, you can control your noise in here. So you have your soft turbulence, uh, hard turbulence, and wavy. I found that wavy uh, works the best. You know, it gives you like a really weird, but at the same time, cool result. So let's do wavy. And um, for velocity, let's bring this up to maybe 35. Overall brightness, uh, maybe 15. And let's just bump up the contrast so we can see our, um, our noise better. And over here we have the visibility scale, 100 centimeters. You can play around with that. And also the uh, wind effect, you know, to blow this noise. It's better to use, it's better used for animation. Uh, so let's just give it another quick render. And uh, let's, let's see what we got. So as you can see guys, while this is rendering, uh, we're getting a really nice and uh, kind of interesting result, uh, you know, using pretty much default uh, Cinema 4D volume lights. And uh, this is as good as it can get. You know, there's not that many options, uh, which is sad, but, you know, last case scenario, you can uh, play around with these and uh, get a decent result. Uh, so let's just, you know, get try to get a little bit better result. Uh, increase the overall fall off here. Maybe, let's see what else is here. Uh, brightness, contrast, maybe let's increase the size to 150. Just to randomize this uh, this noise a little bit and overall brightness let's actually bring it down so we get like a smoky effect and let's see what else visibility let's maybe bump this up to 125 let's see what that does and inner distance should be okay outer distance let's just do 50 uh, 550 just to keep it nice and even and for the details, let's see what else we have. We have contrast, you can play around with that. And also you have your area shape. So right now we had like rectangle. So let's do maybe um, sphere. Let's see what that looks like. Let me just zoom in, position the camera here. And let's give it another quick render. So as you can see guys, uh, it's, it's a pretty nice result. Uh, we get a really nice and foggy scene. Uh, but you know, to give you a few tips, you know, with materials, this would look even better. Uh, but like I said, try to block your light with something to get uh, nice shadows going. Also, you can play around with the overall noise effect, you know, the octaves, uh, the, the different uh, complexity of the noise. As you can see, we can bump this up uh, all the way to 8. Uh, but don't try not to go crazy because it's really going to slow down your computer. Uh, also, play around with these two, velocity, uh, brightness, and contrast. So we'll just bump this up to 75 just to get a different result here and for overall brightness let's do maybe 160 let's see what that does and also what you can do is use temperature so let's get like a dark result now let's see what that does and yeah that's about it I mean you don't really have that many options here uh, inside the details tab you can control uh, the overall size of the light and turn on your inverse square uh, fall off. Also, you have your contrast here. And uh, for the spotlight, you have uh, pretty much the same options. Visibility is your main tab when it comes to um, controlling your volumes. Uh, there's not that many uh, you know, options. You basically have scale, your samples, and brightness, dust, and contrast, stuff like that, nothing crazy. And the noise can spice, uh, spice things up, you know, give you like a more interesting result. And, uh, you, know, you know, using volumes inside here would be like your last case scenario. Try not to use it. Try to get your hands on, you know, Octane, Arnold, and try to use your volumes in there. Uh, but if you want to get a nice and dirty result, uh, you can play around with these options and maybe get something decent going like I have here. Let me maybe position the camera a little bit better. Maybe something like this. And let me just drop the camera so I don't have to reposition this a hundred times. And let's increase the overall fall off here. So maybe let's do something like this. And also the inner distance. Let's see what we have here. Let's maybe bring this up to 100. And jump in the camera and give it one final render. 
So as you can see guys, it looks pretty cool. Uh, we're getting pretty decent results uh, with the default light. There's nothing impressive, obviously, like other uh, renderers. Uh, but these, you know, would be like your last case scenario, especially if you apply decent materials on here and uh, you can probably get pretty nice results. And I'm only using one um, volumetric light. So if you get a couple in there, you know, try to mix the noises a little bit. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can get a pretty cool result going. Uh, but anyway, guys, hopefully this video helped you. Um, please subscribe to my channel for uh, more videos. And as always, have a nice day. And uh, I will see you in my next video, guys. Uh, goodbye.